Have you ever wondered how sugar-free products still taste so sweet? The secret is aspartame, a zero-calorie sweetener found in thousands of items, from diet soda to yogurt and chewing gum. But behind its widespread use lies a deeper story filled with curiosity, science, and controversy. It's one of the most talked about ingredients in the food world. What exactly is aspartame? Where did it come from? And is it truly safe? Let's explore the truth behind this famously sweet ingredient right here on History of Simple Things. Aspartame's discovery wasn't planned at all. In fact, it was a complete accident. Back in 1965, chemist James Schlatter was working on a drug to treat ulcers. While synthesizing some chemical compounds, he licked his finger to pick up a piece of paper, something chemists definitely don't recommend doing, and noticed a surprisingly sweet taste. That compound was aspartame. It turned out to be about 200 times sweeter than regular sugar, meaning you only need a tiny amount to sweeten food or drinks. Because it's used in such small doses, the calorie content becomes virtually zero, perfect for diet products. Aspartame is made up of two amino acids, phenylalanine and aspartic acid. These are actually naturally occurring building blocks found in many protein-rich foods, like meat, dairy, and eggs. When you eat aspartame, your body breaks it down into those same components, plus a little bit of a methanol, a type of alcohol that can also be found in fruits and vegetables. Sounds harmless enough, right? But here's where things get a little tricky. Aspartame has been the subject of endless headlines, health warnings, and conspiracy theories since it hit the market in the 1980s. Some people claimed it caused headaches, memory loss, or even more serious conditions like cancer. Others swore it triggered mood disorders or neurological issues. So what does the science actually say? Multiple global health authorities, including the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, the European Food Safety Authority, EFSA, the World Health Organization, WHO, and many others, have all reviewed the research on aspartame. Their conclusion? At normal levels of consumption, aspartame is safe. In fact, you'd have to consume an incredible amount to even approach the acceptable daily intake ADI set by health agencies. For example, for an adult weighing 70 kilograms, around 154 pounds, that's the equivalent of about 20 cans of diet soda per day. Not something most people would do. Still, that doesn't mean aspartame is for everyone. If you have a rare genetic condition called phenylketonuria, PKU, aspartame can be dangerous. People with PKU can't process phenylalanine, one of aspartame's components. That's why you'll see warning labels on anything containing aspartame. It's a safety notice specifically for those with PKU. Others might simply prefer to avoid it because of how it tastes or how their bodies react to it. Some people report headaches or digestive issues, though research hasn't found solid evidence linking aspartame to consistent side effects in the general population. Back in the 80s and 90s, aspartame exploded in popularity. People were cutting calories, watching their sugar intake, and embracing light or diet everything. NutraSweet became a household name and equal soon followed as the tabletop sweetener of choice. It was the perfect solution at the time, all the sweetness without the guilt. 
Today, more people are leaning toward natural alternatives like stevia or monk fruit extract. There's growing interest in clean labels and plant-based ingredients, and artificial sweeteners like aspartame are facing more scrutiny than ever before, not necessarily because they're unsafe, but because consumers are demanding more transparency and simplicity in what they eat. From a nutrition perspective, aspartame does serve a real purpose. For people managing diabetes, reducing sugar intake, or trying to lose weight, it provides a way to enjoy sweetness without blood sugar spikes or added calories. But it's also important not to fall into the trap of thinking a sugar-free label equals healthy. Diet sodas and low-calorie desserts can still be ultra-processed and low in actual nutritional value. Aspartame is a tool, not a magic bullet. Balance, as always, is key. So what happens to aspartame after you eat or drink it? As mentioned earlier, your body breaks it down into phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and methanol. All three are substances your body naturally handles in small amounts. They're absorbed and processed, just like similar compounds you'd get from other foods. Methanol, for example, sounds scary. It's toxic in large amounts. But you'd actually get more methanol from drinking a glass of tomato juice than from a can of diet soda with aspartame. At the end of the day, whether or not you choose to consume aspartame is a personal choice. Some people prefer it because they're cutting sugar or calories. Others avoid it because they prefer natural ingredients or just don't like the taste. And that's okay. What matters is knowing what it is and how it works, so you can make informed decisions. So next time you open a diet soda or tear open that little blue packet of Equal, remember, behind that sweet taste is a long history of science, debate, and discovery. Aspartame may not be perfect, and it's certainly not for everyone, but it's also not the villain it's often made out to be. As with anything we eat, it comes down to knowledge, balance, and choice. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.